so we should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom is our salvation, life, and resurrection, through whom we are saved and delivered. So we begin our evening Mass of the Lord's Supper. We begin by always asking God pardon, forgiveness, and his mercy. You're sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Now we have the, the Gloria, and if you could just ring the bell while we just pray the Gloria, because it's a special time to give glory to God. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who have called us to participate in this most sacred supper, in which your only begotten Son, when about to hand himself over to death, entrusted to the Church a sacrifice new for all eternity, the banquet of his love, grant, we pray, that we may draw from so great a mystery the fullness of charity and of life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now we have the readings. First reading, a reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month is to be the first month of all the others for you the first month of your year. Speak to the whole community of Israel and say, on the 10th day of this month, each man must take an animal from the flock, one for each family, one animal for each household. If the household is too small to eat the animal, a man must join with his neighbor, the nearest to his house, as the number of persons requires. You must take into account what each can eat in deciding the number for his animal. It must be an animal without blemish, a male one-year-old. You may take it from either sheep or goats. You must keep it till the 14th day of the month when the whole assembly of the community of Israel shall slaughter it between the two evenings. Some of the blood must then be taken and put on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses where it is eaten. That night the flesh is to be eaten, roasted over the fire. It must be eaten with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. You shall eat it like this, with a girdle round your waist, sandals on your feet, a staff in your hand. You shall eat it hastily. It is a Passover in honour of the Lord. That night I will go through the land of Egypt and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, man and beast alike, and I shall deal out punishment to all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. The blood shall serve to mark the houses that you live in. 
When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and you shall escape the destroying plague when I strike the land of Egypt. This day is to be a day of remembrance for you, and you must celebrate it as a feast in the Lord's honour. For all generations you are to declare it a day of festival forever. The word of the Lord. Responsorial Psalm. Response. The blessing cup that we bless is a communion with the blood of Christ. How can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? The cup of salvation I will raise. I will call on the Lord's name. Response. O precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of the faithful. Your servant, Lord, your servant am I. You have loosened my bonds. Response. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make. I will call on the Lord's name. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill before all his people. Response. Second reading, a reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. This is what I received from the Lord, and in turn passed on to you, that on the same night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread, and thanked God for it, and broke it, and he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this as a memorial of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this as a memorial of me. Until the Lord comes, therefore, every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are proclaiming his death. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel acclamation. Praise and honour to you, Lord Jesus. I give you a new commandment. Love one another just as I have loved you, says the Lord. Praise and honour to you, Lord Jesus. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. <clears throat> it was before the festival of the Passover, and Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were his in the world, but now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper, and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, <coughs> to betray him. <clears throat> and Jesus knew that the Father <clears throat> had put everything in his hands, <clears throat> excuse me, and that <clears throat> He had come from God and was returning to God. And he got up from the table. He removed his outer garment and, taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. He then poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. Now he came to Simon Peter who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, At the moment you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. And Jesus replied, If I do not wash you, you could have nothing in common with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. And Jesus said, no one who has taken a bath needs washing. He is clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. He knew he was going, who it was going to betray him. 
That is why he said, though not all of you are. Then he had, when he had washed their feet and put on his clothes again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. Please. One thing I think we do have, whatever our shortcomings, is a deep, you know, instinctive devotion to the Mass. Tonight is the anniversary of the Mass. So it's a special night for all priests, because <clears throat> tonight's the anniversary of its institution. We commemorate the Last Supper every time we celebrate Mass. However, at this holy Thursday evening Mass, we commemorate the Last Supper in a very focused way. That's why only this holy Thursday is called the evening Mass of the Lord's Supper. The remembrance of that Last Supper was one of the most precious traditions of the Church. It was a precious tradition because of what happened at that Last Supper, what Jesus actually did. Paul initially, in his second reading today, he refers to that evening as the night that he, Jesus, was betrayed. That was the dark side of that evening one of Jesus' closest disciples, one of the twelve, on that group in whom Jesus had invested so much of himself, betrayed Jesus that, that evening. Yet, the shadow that was cast over that evening did not define it. It was not defined in the memory of the early church by Judas' act of betrayal, no. It was instead defined by Jesus' act of love. <clears throat> and it is that act of love that we commemorate and celebrate this holy Thursday evening. First of all, this is the day when our Lord gave us the Holy Eucharist. He took the bread and the wine, and for the very first time, he changed it into his body and blood. He said, this is my body given for you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Now, this wasn't a special kind of magic, no. It was a sacrificial thing, an offering of himself, an offering that would be completed the following day on the cross. So our Mass combines two, two things. Two things are present here, the supper and the sacrifice. The night before and the day after. And our Mass doesn't just bring it to mind to recall it or to remember it. Actually, it makes it present. The word, it makes it actually present. It reenacts it. Christ renews his offering in the Mass and invites us to enter in. That's why the Mass is so wonderful. We could never explain the Mass fully, never. What really makes the Mass so special, of course, is that Christ is present, not just in memory. He is present. He is really and truly present under the appearance, of course, of bread and wine. 
So we don't come to Mass merely to pray to God, the Father. We come to be with Christ, to hear him, to be nourished by him, and to offer ourselves with him. When Jesus, see, we, the priest offers the body and the blood. That's Christ. And we do that with him. We offer Christ during the sacrifice of the Mass. Now, there's another act of love that defines this evening. You know, very often in the culture of Jesus, a host would give his guests a bowl of water to wash off the streets and paths off their feet. It was dusty and it would be dirty, and they wore maybe sandals or simply bare feet. So they're usually given water to wash their feet. We don't have that here, so we're not used to that. But we try to reenact it in some way every Holy Thursday to try and give the meaning, what it really means. It's not simply a matter of washing somebody's feet. No. The person who used to wash the feet might be the get might be the slave, you know, of the guest. He might carry out this menial task. Yet look what happened tonight in the gospel. What happened? Jesus himself, he took off his garment, his outer one, and began to wash the feet of his disciples. He's turned it right round. And this is how Jesus wanted to relate to his disciples. He wanted to serve them in this very menial way, as it would have been understood then. See, we have to see those disciples as representing all future disciples. All of us here this evening, and we have a few representatives who will have their feet washed here this evening. They represent all of us in a very special way. The way Jesus relates to them is how he wants to relate to us all. And he illustrates in a most dramatic way the inescapable link between the Eucharist and service. It takes a long time to celebrate Mass. It's a lifetime. Every day of the week, be it Sunday or Monday, is a Eucharistic inheritance. We can wash people's feet, I said, without taking off their shoes at all. When we really serve our people and we love simply as Jesus loved. We saw Peter here, he didn't want Jesus to wash his feet. But Jesus said, if I do not wash you, you could have nothing in common with me. If you refuse to have your feet washed, you can have nothing to do with me. That's very significant, isn't it? So now we have to be like Peter, submit and do what Jesus did and wash each other's feet. Now, just before we do that, I would like to invite our new ministers of the Eucharist to come forward, because this is a night of special significance for the Eucharist, and they're going to become ministers of the Holy Eucharist, this most precious gift of Jesus himself. That's the gift that he's given us and we want to use it in the best way possible to serve our brothers and sisters. So now I invite Bernie and Louisa, Denise and Marie just to come forward.
<clears throat> dear friends in Christ, our dear brothers and our sisters here, as Bernie, Louise, Denise, and Marie, are to be entrusted with administering the Eucharist and with taking communion to the sick. Now, dear friend, I, in this ministry, you must be examples of Christian living in faith and conduct. You must strive to grow in holiness through this sacrament of unity and love. Remember that, though many, we are one body because we share the one bread and the one cup. As extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion, be therefore especially observant of the Lord's command to love your neighbor. For when he said to them, this is my commandment, that you should love one another as I have loved you. So I ask you now these questions. Are you resolved to undertake the office of giving the body and blood of the Lord to your brothers and sisters and so serve to build up the church? Are you resolved to administer the Holy Eucharist with the utmost care and reverence? Could you please, just for a moment, kneel? Dear friends in Christ, let us pray with confidence to the Father. Let us ask him to bestow his blessings on our brothers and sisters chosen to be extraordinary ministers of the Holy Communion. Merciful Father, creator and guide of your family, bless our dear sisters now. May they faithfully give the bread of life to your people, strengthened by this sacrament, May they come at last to the banquet of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Congratulations and thank you. Now we will continue with another special a cel celebration. It's the washing of the feet, representing Christ washing the feet, indeed, of his disciples. So you, I ask you to welcome and come forward.
the prayer of the faithful. As we reflect on the suffering which Jesus endured for us, we come to you, Father, imploring your help and inspiration. In washing his apostles' feet, Jesus is giving us a model to follow in our care for others. We pray that in our every thought and action, we be loyal followers of Christ, treating our fellow man and woman with care, kindness, honesty, and love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, in our moments of confusion and doubt, we ask that you be by at our side. You promised Peter that he would later understand the meaning of the washing of the feet. Help us to trust in you and preserve when our faith is weak. Lord, hear us. But graciously hear us. As we reflect on this night when Jesus asked the apostles to stay awake with him, we pray that as Christians we too be vigilant and be supportive of his message to a very troubled world. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. At this time when Mary, our mother, suffered the loss of her beloved son, we remember in our prayers the mothers and fathers of those who in the past year have suffered the loss of children and loved ones. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <clears throat> As we reflect on the sufferings of the innocent, Jesus, we pray for all those who are currently suffering from fear, hunger and aggression in Ukraine. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. <clears throat> we bow our heads in remembrance, silence, our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. So loving God, hear the prayer of your church and grant to all humanity faith in your promise and hope in the resurrection, a new life. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Now we have the, the, the offertory procession, the ministers of the Eucharist now, our new extraordinary ministers can take up the bread and the wine. mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and with contrite hearts. And Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me 
from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering at his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood, that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, <coughs> with Eamon, Michael, our bishops, and all those holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, those we were remembering this evening, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service and that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer 
for our salvation and the salvation of all. That is, today he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took his precious chalice, his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, Hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord, you sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, 
and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. So I now invite you all to pray together that great prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to exchange a sign of peace whatever way you wish to your neighbour. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Let us name the name of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ an eternal life to us. We receive. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Indeed, may the body of Christ keep us safe now for eternal life.
This is the body which will be given up for you, and this is the chalice of the new covenant in my blood, says the Lord. Do this whenever you receive it in memory of me. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that just as we, as we are renewed by the supper of your Son in this present age, so we may enjoy the banquet for all eternity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Now we just transfer the most blessed sacrament to the altar, indeed all repose. <laughs> 